Let's take a look at this problem. Uh, the original problem description is um, this uh, didn't sweep all along this entire path. Now I've turned on the sketch dimensions to show the equations that, um, as I do this uh, problem over again it, that will help me uh, continue on. And a couple of things I noticed. Uh, first thing I notice is there's an extra work plane here that really isn't needed. Whenever possible I use the uh, origin work planes and so um, this circle uh, down here uh, could have been uh, put on the XY plane and so this plane isn't even needed. The second thing that I notice in I notice this in several different ways uh, so we're we're gonna end up not even uh, putting a work plane in there. Uh, but I also noticed then that um, uh, there is no push pin or thumbtack um, and this sketch is not fully constrained. Right, well this one isn't. So this one so this one it has a push pin on it. It tells me it's fully constrained. This one down here it doesn't have the push pin and also I can tell by the color of it uh, that it is not uh, fully constrained. So that's a, a absolute beginner mistake which should be eliminated you know within a couple hours of um, starting to learn how to use inventor or any parametric modeler um, they all do the same thing the color changes letting you know or it has some way of letting you know that uh, whether the sketch is fully defined or not so the first thing I'm going to do is fully define that sketch so I'm going to edit that sketch and I go here and I drag the circle and I see that the circle is in no way uh, connected to the uh, the path uh, so we need to connect the profile to the path so I'll project geometry and I'll get this endpoint and then I'll do a coincident the center of this circle and I'll watch the color of that circle and also down here it tells me some dimensions are needed I'll click on that now it says it's fully constrained the color of it changes to the fully constrained color and it shows a push pin over here that that sketch is now fully constrained I'll then edit the uh, sweep feature and with the path selected make sure that it's highlighted enough I don't really like the way this is in 2020 uh, you know to give you a better idea of uh, what is um, active here but uh, I had this little blue bar here now so I can see that that's active I'll select this again and um, it goes around and uh, selects the remaining portions of that path now it would probably be ideal if it selected that all in one step. Um, let's uh, delete this get this uh, feature, but I'm going to retain the sketches. Now remember, I put this circle um, coincident to the path, and I'll do sweep again. And so it's already pre-selected the profile for me, and I'll select the path again, and this time it goes all the way around on the first selection. Um, so make sure that your sketches are fully constrained. In particular, make sure your profiles are constrained to the uh, path. Now let's look at doing this in a different uh, in a different way. So uh, I'm going to uh, start a a new sketch and um, let's uh, go back and see what uh, plane this was on. So that was on the top plane. So I'll go uh, to the top plane and I'll, I'll start a new sketch on that top plane. I'll then draw a circle um, on that uh, top plane and then I'm going to dimension that circle immediately. And I'll type in my variable name. So um, I'm going to call this loop diameter. And I'm going to set that equal to um, uh, 3 divided by 8 inch. Eight to, 3 eighths of an inch. Then I'm going to draw a rectangle and I'm going to put this rectangle out here in space initially and I'm going to change all of that rectangle to construction line type. And then I'm going to do a coincident constraint between the midpoint of this line and the origin. I'm then going to draw a, a, a arc and I can try to do this as a tangent arc. Now let's try to do that first but tangent wants to go to a straight line and from an end point of a straight line so let's do a three point arc I'll do that arc and be careful you don't click on the quadrant here um, I'll click over here and I'll click someplace here and I want to make that tangent now if it doesn't automatically put the tangents on there um, it was be, um, then I'll go back and add the tangents it look, um, so there's a tangent and there's a tangent on uh, that side 
Then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'll do a three point arc and I'll uh, uh, do the uh, tangents. And I want that tangent to that and I want that tangent to that. I want these two arcs to be equal radius. So I'm going to select equal and I'll select those two arcs and make those equal radius. I'm going to end up not needing this part of the circle and uh, so I'm going to do trim and I'll trim out um, this part of the uh, circle here and here. Alright, uh, next thing I'm going to do is put a line in here from here um, over uh, to here. And I'm going to dimension that line as two inches. And so um, there's actually, um, you know, this construction line and then the line over top of that. I could either pick the endpoints here and here or I could right click and do select other and um, then I get that I get the list of the geometry that's there this curve the construction line or this one I want this one and I'm gonna come up here and I'll do shaft length um, equal uh, two inches all right now I want to define the location of where this point is um, right here and so I'm going to draw a line uh, from this point uh, down to this point and I'm, I'm watching as I do this it putting a, a, a vertical uh, constraint on there and I'll change that to construction and then I'm going to dimension the distance from here over to here and I'm going to set that dimension as the loop diameter um, so let's uh, do this as equal to the loop diameter uh, divided by 4 And when I did that, um, some of my geometry uh, became um, uh, skewed. And I'll drag this back down to uh, where it was. And let's go ahead. I, if I put that on here earlier, um, I'll put in this dimension. Um, and if I'd done that earlier, the geometry would not have become skewed like that. Uh, but I'm going to call this um, a loop gap. Let's do e loop gap. Uh, equal to uh, 3 uh, divided by 32 uh, 3 30 seconds of an inch now I might not dimension this uh, in that way and I'll show you why here in in a few minutes um, I, I would probably dimension this uh, a little differently let's see so uh, everything is fully constrained now at this point and I will uh, draw a line from here uh, over to here and I will dimension that line and again I'll do that select other get that curve and I'm going to uh, dimension that as 1 divided by 2 inch half an inch all right um, so I've got um, I've, I've, got, I've got some uh, geometry in here and uh, I'm going to do a couple more things here. Uh, I'm going to put a line from here over to here and change that to construction line. And then let's look at one more thing that I would probably do on this. So I'm going to create a line out here in space and I'm going to dimension this line and I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this a wire. Um, I'm going to try to do the same uh, convention that the original was. I'll do wire diameter. Uh, equal uh, 1 divided by 16 inch okay so I've got a line out here that I uh, put in for it um, represent that wire diameter now I'm going to put the midpoint of this line over here on the end of that okay and uh, then uh, I might put the same line over here, but I'm going to put it over here so that it'll be more obvious. And so I'm going to put a, another line in here, and I'm going to make this line equal. I'll make this one equal to this line. And then I'm going to do, uh, let's change it to construction. Um, and I'm going to do coincident, the midpoint of this line uh, to this line. And then I'm going to do collinear. We could either do uh, collinear or vertical between this point and this point. And so rather than dimension this loop gap, 
what I might dimension instead of that is dimension the minimum distance that I'm going to allow between my wire because we could change that diameter of the wire where as it goes around it, it intersects um, and so a, a, a better or safer dimension might be from here to here but it all depends on the design intent I just wanted to uh, demonstrate that as a possible issue I'll finish the sketch and then I'll do a, a new sketch on the XY plane and I'll project geometry and I'll project this point and I'll draw a circle so I didn't need to create any work plane uh, in order to uh, create uh, the profile for this now be careful you need to make sure that where you put it is going to be someplace that is um, normal to or perpendicular to the path and only at this point right here on an arc otherwise it would be appropriate to put it down here or to put it here or here or here uh, when you would have to create a work plane as was done in the original I'm going to uh, dimension this and I'll uh, dimension that as that wire diameter and uh, then we'll do our sweep it pre-selects the profile so I don't need to select it I'll select the path and I'll say okay to that and uh, uh, then um, there it is now again on this path let's turn the visibility of that on again See here, as I said, I would dimension the distance from here to here because if I change that wire diameter and make it bigger, if I want to make this a parametric model, I might get to a situation where this, these two interfere with each other, where if I have a, a minimum gap that I know, and I can even make that a function of something else, uh, you know, then I'm not going to run into that situation of uh, interference um, as it does the sweep.